I'm sure at some point or another, someone has introduced you to this idea of doing a day game or street approaching, and you're wondering if it's right for you. Um, maybe you've like just come out of a relationship. Maybe you've been single for a while and all you use is the, uh, the dating apps to, to meet women. And then you haven't been happy with the choices. Um, or perhaps even you've been, when you've been out and about going to work, going to the gym or shopping or seeing friends, there's been someone really attractive or cute that you've, uh, you've really liked and you've just not taken the opportunity to go over and say hello. Well, I want to take the opportunity in this video to essentially go over the uh, the benefits of doing a day game and then you can really decide if um, doing the whole street approaching thing is something that you want to uh, consider. But I do personally um, agree that I think every guy at some point should consider uh, at least experiencing it uh, and trying it out. Um, because there really are just so many benefits to doing it, which I'm going to cover in this video anyway. Um, in a way, I kind of think that it's a bit of a, or it should be a rite of passage for for men to to do, just because of the perks that will come about. So, what is the uh, what are the perks that you're going to experience? Well, let, let's go through this list of of fifteen, and you can decide for yourself at the end if going out and doing street approaching, whether it be with a coach or perhaps maybe with friends that you know who might be doing it themselves, uh, then you can certainly consider it because this is uh, such a great personal development um, uh, industry that can do wonders for you and get you some really good results. So uh, enough of me waffling. Um, so point number one is that it can increase your range of dating opportunities. So this is kind of a, an obvious one that if you're going out to meet more women and talking to people in circumstances that you just wouldn't be talking to them before, then of course you are gonna have more opportunities come about. And especially when you're talking to women who really appreciate um, that confidence with coming over and saying hello, or as it just so happens that maybe you end up talking to someone who is exactly on the same wavelength as you and you are just incredibly compatible with each other, then that is going to do wonders into what is my second point, which is that it gives you a greater opportunity to find life partners and relationships. So if you are someone who is looking for something more long term, it is a great tool to have, having that confidence to go and talk to strangers, especially if it's ones that you're attracted to, to find out if they are people that you want to date or have a relationship with. Um, there have been many occasions over the years of people that I have uh, known or been friends with who have found themselves long-term partners that they are currently married and have kids. And it's just a wonderful thing that all from that skill of learning how to talk to people that they were able to find their life partner because they didn't want to say what if when they saw their partner walking by on the street and they were like, you know what, I I've got to say hello, I've got to give a compliment, I've got to do something. So yeah, it's amazing what can happen uh, just from doing street approaching. Uh, the third one is that it can build confidence and presence, which is just a, a much more fancy term for body language. So in terms of confidence, it's usually how one holds themselves. So think about someone who is really anxious and shy and they have really poor posture. Well, when you're going out and doing a lot of uh, approaching, yes, you're getting the exercise in as well, which is also going to be good for your physique. But you are working on that overall confidence and how you feel about yourself. And usually when a guy feels less and less anxious, they tend to stand a bit taller, a little bit straighter with their head more held higher. They tend to be a bit more enthusiastic with their hands uh, rather than maybe having a more defensive closed off body language, which might be like their, their arms across, which okay, I'm, I'm kind of like over exaggerating there, but um, I'm sure you get what I mean. But then that does lead into point number four, which is that it expands your social comfort zones. So you become more 
comfortable um, in public and you're used to handling the uh, the spotlight effect. So the more you are interacting with people, the more you get a sense of just how people think and feel and act in different circumstances. And it just gives you a better understanding of just how people essentially tick. Uh, it also teaches you um, a really good life skill that you don't have the universe uh, revolve around you, that everyone is just getting on and doing their own things in life. And really, they just don't care about you. They just, you know, they've got their own problems and concerns and worries to be uh, thinking about. And when you're certainly, you know, talking to people on the street, it really does emphasize the whole spotlight effect um, situation because, you know, if you're running up to go and talk to a stranger and people that are then looking at you and especially if you're flirting with someone on the street and you're laughing and they're laughing and giggling and stuff, then, you know, people are going to have that curiosity and wonder what on earth is going on. So it gets you a little bit more desensitized to the whole spotlight effect experience, which is a really, really good thing. Um, because then it can mean like if, especially at work, you know, if you're doing like lots of presentations and whatnot, then you're going to be more comfortable in standing there and presenting yourself. Or if you're a public speaker, being able to present yourself and not give a toss of what other people think, or you'll be like, oh, you know what? People are just sitting there. All they want to do is just hear the value I'm sharing. They don't really care about me. It's fine. So you do, you get a better sense of reality and just how people are. Um, which then point number five, um, that you then get an increased level in serotonin and endorphins and a decrease in cortisol. So these can affect your overall well-being and happiness. And for those that don't quite know their, their sciences or hormones, the endorphins and serotonin are your good hormones. And cortisol is the uh, the stress hormone. So Usually when someone goes into like a fight or flight or if they get really stressed, cortisol gets released in the body. And yes, it does help with the pumping the adrenaline and whatnot and works in collaboration with it. But it's not beneficial necessarily for you when you are talking to uh, someone that you're really attracted to, someone that you like. But when you've got the serotonin and the endorphins flowing and you've uh, lowered that level of cortisol, what you are doing is you are reducing your stress, reducing your anxiety, and you're increasing your overall happiness, which is only going to make interacting with strangers and new people even easier. And you're going to have a good time doing it. And especially as when those moments happen, when those endorphins are released, you're going to get really good positive reference experience because you're going to just start remembering all of the uh, the good conversations and the good memories and interactions rather than potentially all of those negative ones. Uh, which then leads me on to point number six, that you're going to get improved uh, social intelligence and the understanding of how society works. So a little bit um, similar to like with the expanding of your social comfort zones, you just have a better sense of the world. You have an, a clearer understanding of just how people interact with each other, um, how the world works, and it just makes it even easier to fit yourself into society because you understand that inherently if you have certain positive behaviors or if you act a certain way, then you will be treated in a certain way. So if you're meeting women and you're holding yourself with more confidence, you dress yourself in a better way, you have better hygiene because you understand what you need to be uh, doing to be presentable to another person, then people are going to hold you in higher regard um, as well. Number seven, um, that doing something like day game teaches you how to handle stressful situations and uh, remain calm through the fight or flight experiences. So of course you are doing something that is against the social norm. It's obviously not what normal people would essentially do. doesn't mean that it you can't make it the norm for yourself, but that will be a, a different video. But um, being able to handle st stressful situations 
you can apply that to every area of your life, whether you're training in the gym, whether some like horrific incident has happened and you need to know how to work in that situation. Oh, what's another stressful situation uh, that one might might find themselves in? Well, I mean, in regards to like with dating, I mean, you know, you if you're meeting someone that you are incredibly attracted to, you're not going to freak out. You're going to be able to stand there keep your cool, hold your ground, and believe it or not, that is just going to exude more confidence for you because you're remaining unreactive and certainly desensitized to a very stressful situation. So number eight, that it enhances your cognitive thinking and your reactivity. So just how quickly you can think on your feet. So one of the amazing things with being able to be more sociable and certainly having more conversations and interactions with new people is that it does develop how you think and process ideas and it certainly works on your creativity. So there's a, a book from a guy called Daniel Kahneman, I think, called Thinking Fast and Slow. I'm sure that's how you pronounce his name. But there's a uh, he the concept with it is just how in different circumstances, how you're able to you need to be thinking really fast on your feet and also where you can take the time to really process something to make sure that you know what the best course of action is on a project or doing something going forward. So certainly being able to uh, talk to women, um, especially in a stressful situation you're going to learn that skill of being able to be very quick thinking on what to say if she says this or what to say if she says that. So essentially it is kind of a development in your conversation skills. Um, ne the next one, so number nine, is that it brings out your leadership and taking initiative skills. So even something as simple as when you're talking to someone and saying, you know, can I have your number or can let me, let me, let's go for a drink sometime. Let me take your number. Or, um, if you've got a free 20 minutes now, let's go for a coffee. That level of spontaneity and initiative, um, can certainly develop your leadership skills. And this is great for guys who do have very low confidence because then it puts them in a very different not just mindset, but situation that maybe they've not really experienced before. And they get to learn how to be, you know, this guy who can take control, who can be more responsible and take action with his life, which again, is only going to just breed more positive uh, situations for you. So number 10 is that it improves your understanding of the world and culture. So when you're meeting so many people, you're going to be having conversations that you've never really had before. You're going to be meeting people from very different backgrounds, cultures, uh, religions, ethnicities, etc. And it gives you an opportunity to be very curious and get to know uh, uh, topics that you've never really had the opportunity to explore before. And that is going to be incredibly beneficial for you because then when you meet new people, you have more conversational topics to talk about. You're also going to have a new set of knowledge and wisdom on things that you've been able to talk about or discuss with other people and bring forward into new conversations, which is only going to help you to build attraction even more. So number 11, which leads on to that you're going to have then better conversations, better linguistics, charisma and seduction skills. So having better conversations with people is going to make you appear or be more interesting, um, especially if you're more cultured. And that doesn't necessarily mean that you have to be traveling around the world and, you know, get these uh they count them as like flags like like holiday flags where like i've been to 50 countries and stuff like you don't need to do that but what is great is being able to show interest in other people and where they're from um, and have an understanding of their hobbies and interests and culture so that then leads on to something like linguistics when you are talking to more and more people you're going to get used to being able to speak at a much slower and relaxed pace. You might not be, you know, I don't talk like really energetically and really quickly, you know, 
You're going to be really relaxed. You're going to be very calm and cool. You're going to understand how to uh, pause and articulate yourself properly. You're going to be able to hold eye contact with people better. Um, you're going to have, again, that better posture, but just ultimately how you speak to people is overall going to be improved. Um, and charisma and seduction skills would, of course, if you're learning how to flirt with someone, and especially if you're not very good at flirting to begin with, and you're having the opportunity to practice, 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 you are only going to get better with it and your seduction skills are going to improve and you're going to learn how to flirt more importantly, which for me is just the alternative. Well, actually is the uh, probably the better phrase than just saying seduction, but you are going to learn how to flirt and uh, portray better intentions to someone that you are attracted to, especially if you're out on dates. Uh, which leads on to point number 12, that it's going to increase your sexual masculine energy. It is safe to say that the more you are interacting with the opposite sex, the more you are demonstrating your attraction and confidence uh, and uh, even sexual interest in another person, you are going to be seen in a much more sexual Kind of way. Uh, well, I was going to say, but well, actually, no. You'll be seen in a much more, as a much more sexual, energetic man, and that alone can certainly cause more heads to uh, to turn and check you out when you are out and about in public. Um, a lot of guys, um, part of their lacking confidence means that they don't have that sexual energy, which means that you know when they're going on dates or when they are meeting women, they're not really seen in this sexual kind of way. They're not really seen as a sexual partner. And so they're essentially ruled out altogether and they're just put in that friend zone. So by being able to interact with more women and practice flirting, you are going to improve your sexual energy and just how you carry yourself as a man as well. So point number 13 is that it increases your spontaneity and drive to succeed, making you more impulsive and more motivated. So when you've got that sexual energy there, you're going to find you're going to get this new motivation and drive to want to do stuff, as well as you're going to be more spontaneous with your decisions. You know, you might be like, you know what? I haven't had a holiday in a while. I'm going to book a holiday and then you might literally go that same day onto some holiday websites, book a holiday. And within a few days, you might be on a really sunny beach somewhere with a cocktail. So there is also a level of confidence with that. And a lot of people, you know, they are very attracted to someone who is very quick on making decisions and, you know, and wanting to go on adventures rather than just sitting indoors and doing nothing all the time. So definitely consider doing um, street approaching to work on that level of spontaneity by, you know, taking that initiative of if you see someone, you're like, you know what, I really like that person. I'm going to go for it. And I'm going to just have a conversation and see if I, uh, I like them or not. And if I want to take them on a date rather than potentially having that what if question play out. So uh, yeah, that's going to be a really, really good one for you. And uh, last two, um, but 14, number 14 is that it can help you to achieve self-actualization, which uh, if you're not aware, um, a, uh, I don't know, I wouldn't say it's an experiment, but a theory that I absolutely love is Maslow's hierarchy of needs, this kind of development of what someone needs to be experiencing or have for them to get to this level of uh, self-accomplishment. And self-actualization um, is also just another term for allowing a guy to understand what his self-worth is. So as you're building your confidence and you've worked on maybe then other areas of your life as well, and you are experiencing these previous 13 um, uh, benefits so far, then ultimately you're not, you're going to be a little bit more Zen. You might then be even more selective of the women that you want to date. You might appreciate having much more long-term commitments with people and building friendships and whatnot. You might also be more, um, 
uh, disciplined and picky of the uh, the experiences that you want to go and explore and try. So that really is then the ultimate goal of that. You know your place in the world, that you know who you are as a person. You see yourself in such high regard and you are, are happy and content with who you are. And then the last one, and of course, I got to end it on a, a bit more of a, a cheesy note as well, is that you can be then part of a community. You can be gaining support from other people who are in the exact same boat as you, who want to go on that same journey as you. And you can also form friends from that as well. Uh, it's not uncommon that so many guys, they make lifelong friendships with people, uh, especially when they find other commonalities outside of the dating scene, because just being attracted to women is not enough to have something in common with a guy. Uh, I will do a video on this, but um, being able to form friendships with people, especially if you are maybe someone who is lonely and doesn't have much of a social circle going on, um, it really is great to know that, you know, that there are other guys in that same boat and that they want to be better people or better men themselves and that they also want to find happiness. You know, they also want relationships as well. So I hope this list of 15 different things was really interesting for you. Um, I would love to know your thoughts on these. And if you're also someone who is thinking about um, doing a day game. I'm always going to, I'm always going to say this in, in, uh, in brackets, but uh, if you're someone who's uh, interested in doing day game or street approaching, um, then I would love to hear your thoughts and maybe even hesitations on like why you've been on the fence about doing it yourself. And if you can please like this video, subscribe to my channel uh, to stay up to date on all things that's going to help you to build your confidence. And if you've also got any ideas for videos, then I would love to hear them because I really want this channel to help guys with their mental health. Um, I want people to be able to find relationships and happiness, whatever that looks like. I think we live in a very sort of strange time at the moment and I want to do whatever I can to uh, essentially contribute and make people's lives better uh, which then leads me on to the one last thing is if you uh, have any past negative memories or traumas and you need help with getting rid of them so then it can help you to move on in life I am also an integral eye movement therapist um, I would love for you to check out the uh the link to my webpage on uh, the description box or in the description box below so you can have a look at some of my services. Same with my life coaching stuff as well where I can also help guys to uh, be more proactive and hold them accountable with taking action in their lives and getting results. So thank you for watching. Check out the links, subscribe, and uh, I will see you in the next video.